Hi there, my name is Aznurin, and here are my group members: Akila, hello, Amira, hi, Muaz, yo, and Dini Aiman. Assalamualaikum. We are from Group Twelve of UATM, the students of Batch. In this video, we will be showing you about our oral case management presentation, which is one of our assessment in oral medicine course module. Our topic is the effect of chlorhexidine mouthwash. Let's begin. Did you know that 9 in 10 Malaysian adults have experienced gum disease, such as gingivitis? No! And have you heard about dental plaque associated with gingivitis? No! Well, dental plaque associated with gingivitis is a reversible inflammatory condition caused by an accumulation and persistence of macrobial biofilms on the tooth surface. It can be observed by redness and swelling of the gingiva and makes it bleed easily. People who are susceptible with this condition need to be aware that this condition can be worse by time as it can cause periodontitis. Periodontitis is a serious gum infection that damages the soft tissue. Without treatment, it can destroy the bone that supports your teeth, which then can cause teeth to loosen or lead to tooth loss. Fair warning, this condition is not reversible. What? So, how do we prevent this? Usually, it can be treated by simply maintaining good oral hygiene, like brushing and flossing your teeth daily. But sometimes, the dentist will advise you to use chlorhexidine mouthwash for a better result. Chlorhexidine is one of the most frequently prescribed medication belong to a group of medicine called antiseptic antibacterial agent. It is indicated as a mouthwash in the treatment of gingivitis. Next, we're going to talk about the uses of chlorhexidine other than mouthwash. It is also commonly used in different products related to skin care. For example, patient pre-operative scrubs and pre-operative showers, hand hygiene such as soaps, Vascular access, for example, cataract and caps, skin preps, and dressings, ventilated auto care, and urology. Another common use of chlorhexidine may be as a skin or cosmetic product, such as hand sanitizers, shampoos, or skin creams. Why do dentists prescribe patients with chlorhexidine mouthwash? To answer this question, we are going to look at the mechanism of action of chlorhexidine gluconate. Generally, it is a broad spectrum biocide effective against gram positive bacteria, gram negative bacteria, and fungi. It inactivates microorganisms with a broader spectrum than antibiotic and has a quicker kill rate than other antimicrobials. It has both barostatic and bactericidal mechanism of action depending on its concentration. Chlorocidine kills by disrupting the cell membrane. Upon application in vitro, chlorocidine can kill nearly 100% of gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria within 30 seconds. In other application, chlorocidine binds to the mouth tissue, oral mucosa and teeth. It is then released over time to kill bacteria and fungi. This helps to reduce the bacterial count and prevents dental block. It has become the gold standard in the industry due to its ability to adhere to soft and hard tissue and maintain a potent sustained release. There are three common side effects of using chlorhexidine mouthwash. First of all, it might cause staining of tooth surface, restoration, and the tongue. Secondly, some people experience an alteration in teeth during treatment. This includes decreased taste sensation, unusual or unpleasant taste in the mouth. In rare instances, permanent taste alteration is experienced after the treatment has run its course. 
and the third patient also may have an increase in tartar formation other less common side effects of chloracidine are mouth or throat irritation dry mouth tongue swelling or mouth sores a very serious allergic reaction to this drug is rare however patient with this allergy may show symptoms of a serious allergic reaction including mouth or skin rash itching or swelling especially of the face tongue and throat severe dizziness and difficulty in breathing the dose of this medicine will be different for different patients. The amount of medicine that the patients take depends on the strength of the medicine. The number of doses they take each day, the time allowed between doses, and the length of time they take the medicine also depend on their medical problem. Next, to make things simple, we will be only discussing the dosage of this medicine for the adults or children 12 years old and above with certain conditions. For aptus ulcer and oral candidiasis, there are several ways clohexidine can be prescribed to the patients, each with different concentration and administration. The dosage below also can be applied for the oral hygiene purpose. Firstly, the dose for clohexidine digloconate 0.2% spray is twice a day with a maximum of 12 actuation. As for clohexidine digloconate 1% gel, patients must brush their teeth with 1 inch of gel once or twice a day for about 1 minute. As for chlorhexidine digloconate 0.2% solution, patients need to rinse their mouth twice a day with 10 ml for about 1 minute or soak their dentures for 50 minutes twice a day. Next, the gingivitis disease. For chlorhexidine digloconate 0.2% spray, it's twice a day for 1 month with a maximum of 12 actuations a day. As for chlorhexidine gluconate 0.2% solution, patients need to rinse their mouth twice a day with 15 ml for about 30 seconds. As for chlorhexidine digloconate 0.2% solution, patients need to rinse their mouth twice a day with 10 ml for about 1 minute. There are a few precautions when using this chlorhexidine mouthwash. First of all, in rare cases, Patients might have allergic reactions. This product may contain inactive ingredients which can cause allergic reactions or other problems. Spit it out. Do not swallow it. Chlorhexidine may have a bitter aftertaste. Patients are advised to not rinse their mouth with water immediately after using chlorhexidine, since doing so will increase the bitterness. Rinsing may also decrease the effect of the medicine. Chlorhexidine should be used after brushing. Do not brush your teeth, rinse with water, or eat immediately after using it. Chlorhexidine treats gingivitis, not periodontitis. Chlorhexidine might even make gum problems like periodontitis worse. Patients should visit their dentist at least every 6 months for a checkup to have their teeth clean and gums as mine. As mentioned earlier, chlorhexidine mouthwash might cause staining to your teeth. Remember that the use of chlorhexidine mouthwash is not a replacement for brushing your teeth using dental floss or regular visit to the dentist. Chlorhexidine is not approved for use by children under the age of 18. Chlorhexidine gluconate oral rinse is also used to treat gingivitis. However, Chlorhexidine gluconate oral rinse is not for treating all types of gingivitis. Next, for the case report. At Marut, a 19-year-old female patient presented with a major complaint of bleeding from the gum. Oral prophylaxis and chlorocidine mouthwash was then prescribed to the patient. And it is also reported that the patient had never used any chlorocidine mouthwash before. On the first time using with the chlorocidine, which is after about 12 hours of using it, the patient observed reddening on her forehead, face and the side of the neck. The next morning, she started feeling some burning sensation on the red spots that she noticed previously. And after a couple hours of using the chlorocidine mouthwash the next morning, she noticed marked redness on her upper back neck region, lower abdomen, and on the front of the elbow and forearms that also accompanied with irritation. On physical examination, the patient presented with uticaria on her forehead, 
face, the front of the elbow and forearms, side and upper back region of the neck and on the lower abdomen with no oral changes were observed. Moving on to the lab investigation, the patient underwent a skin prick test to confirm if she experienced an allergic reaction to chlorhexidine. A positive result had shown within 30 minutes where the skin had become red and itchy surrounded by a white raised wheel that appeared from the drop of chlorhexidine solution area, indicating that chlorhexidine causes an immediate hypersensitivity reaction and may present in the form of acute urticaria. From the information gathered in the history, physical examination and investigation, the patient had confirmed to be diagnosed with chlorhexidine mouthwash allergy in a formulation of 1 to 1 concentration resulting in urticaria. Plus, allergic reactions from the skin prick test had been the most substantial evidence to confirm the final diagnosis. This actively demonstrates that the topical chlorhexidine solution results in the activation of the immune cells and release of histamine into her tissue, causing the symptoms she was experiencing. As for the treatment plan, patients should follow medication that has been prescribed by their respective doctor to reduce their allergic symptoms such as the antihistamines drug. However, prevention is better than cure. Therefore, patients with a history of allergy to chlorocidin need to avoid any product containing chlorocidin in their treatment and consider using alternatives instead. Clinicians also need to be aware of any potential risks of chlorocidin usage in patients, especially when prescribing its formulation as it may cause local symptoms or any other systemic side effects to the patients. Uniform labeling, registration of chlorocidin containing products, increased awareness among patients and medical personnel also could prevent chlorocidin re-exposure. <laughs>